it's moving. I see live on my Facebook screen. That's cool. Excited to have St. Pete Fire Rescue with us to talk about fires and home safety. And we also have some USF Health Student Service Corps students with us to um, talk about fire and home safety and also to share the book, Impatient Pamela, call 911. We're gonna give you guys a few minutes before we get started. We're very excited to have you join us tonight. This is the completion of our summer series, all on safety. We've done water safety. We have talked about um, life jackets. We've talked about fire safety, hurricane safety, bicycle safety, and now we're gonna do um, home and fire safety. So if you wanna be generous, you should share and go live so you can have other people watch this with you. We would love to have as many people join us tonight as is possible. We have some eager students and some eager St. Pete Fire Department Fire Rescue community educators here to train us this evening and share information. Okay. So everyone, welcome to Fire Safety. We're gonna be featuring a book called Impatient Pamela Calls 911. And our collaborators this evening are not only the USF Health Student Service Corps, but also St. Pete Fire Rescue. And as I said earlier, this has been a collaboration this summer, not only with CARD USF, Safe Kids, Suncoast, St. Pete Fire Rescue, and the USF Health Student Service Corps. And so you may wonder, what is CARD? CARD is the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities at USF, also known as CARD USF. And we provide free assistance to families, individuals on the spectrum, businesses, agencies, and other institutions. And our goal is that individuals on the autism spectrum can have a world in which they can live, work, learn, and play um, fully and inclusively. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Ellen Kent, who was with the USF Health Service Corps. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name, my name is Ellen Ken, and I serve as the USF Health Service Corps Coordinator. And our program enables our USF health and pre-health professional students to volunteer together in the community. And normally, <laughs> we do a lot of activities in the summertime and throughout the year in which our wonderful student volunteers are able to work with wonderful community partners like CARD and Safe Kids and St. Pete Fire and Rescue. And we participate in health fairs and mall back to school events and so forth. We go into schools. However, this year, because of COVID, we cannot do that. So instead, we're being creative. And we have created a series of virtual service lessons in partnership with CARD and Safe Kids and St. Pete Fire and Rescue. So tonight I am pleased to introduce to you our two wonderful student volunteers named Sarah and Violetta. And they'll introduce themselves quick, um, briefly 
and then we'll turn it over to our experts with St. Pete Fire and Rescue, who will give an overview of the lesson plan and the objectives for what we're going to all learn tonight. And then our wonderful students will actually teach the lesson. Thank you. So Violetta, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes. So hi, everybody. My name is Violetta Ventura, and I am a fourth year student studying here at USF. And my major is health sciences with a concentration in biological sciences. Thank you. And Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Allen. My name is Sarah Shepard. I'm also a student at USF, and I have a concentration in biomedical sciences as well, going into uh, pre-med, hopefully soon, within the next couple of years. <laughs> Thank you. And now Alexis and Lana will, will explain the objectives of the lesson. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lana Stavanovich. I'm with St. Petersburg Fire Rescue. I'm the training coordinator. Um, what Alexis and I do, which I'll let Alexis introduce herself as well, is we teach fire safety and injury prevention to the community. Um, so our key themes, offer, I'm sorry, I'll first let Alexis introduce herself. Hi, I'm Alexis Lawrence with St. Pete Fire Rescue. I also work with Lana as a public educator for the community. And here are our themes for tonight. So tonight's themes is we are going to talk, um, we're gonna discuss what emergencies are and when to call 911. We wanna teach children that firefighters are not scary when they're in their bunker gear. So we always say never fear a firefighter in gear. Uh, we also are gonna talk about the sound of a smoke alarm, uh, what to do when you hear the beep. We wanted to talk about escape routes, which is get out and stay out, and then having a fire escape plan and a meeting place with your family. And then also stop, drop, and roll when your clothes catch on fire, and then also cooking fire safety. Here's our story, impatient Pamela calls 911. Violetta, if you could get us started. Where's your address? May I do it now, Mama? Pamela begged, already knowing that she lived on Rainbow Drive. No, we'll start in the morning. With meow man at her feet, Pamela dreamt about addresses that rhymed with rainbow, like Stain Row and Plain Black Crow and Fainting Arrow. The next morning, her mother said their address aloud over and over again. By lunchtime, Pamela could remember every word. 1405 Rainbow Drive. Pamela went to play with Martin. They played in piles of leaves. They climbed trees in Martin's backyard and they had snacks on Martin's back steps. Every now and then, Pamela would remember her address. Pamela told Martin her address. Martin knew his own telephone number, 555-3305. Well, Pamela, her mother asked her that evening, can you remember your address? Pamela said her address loudly. Her mother kissed Pamela's cheek. That's my girl, she said proudly. Pamela wanted to learn how to use the telephone. Martin knows his own telephone number. Please, may I, she pleaded. Okay, Pamela, I'll teach you tomorrow. Promise, asked Pamela, hoping her mother wouldn't forget. Promise, said Pamela's mother. That night, Pamela dreamt of addresses and telephone numbers and calling Martin to invite him over to play. May I use the telephone now, Mama? Pamela asked the next morning. 
No, I need to finish a few chores first. Pamela waited impatiently. She sat and stared at the telephone, tapping her fingers on all the buttons and pulling on the telephone cord. She waited and waited. She twirled her ponytail around with her fingers. She counted to 10 in her mind. Seven, eight, nine. Can you reach the number keys? Pamela's mother finally asked. Yes, I can, said Pamela. First, you pick up the receiver and listen for a dial tone. Then, you press the numbers you want to call. How will I know Martin's number, asked Pamela, a little worried. When you are older, you can read numbers from the telephone book. For now, here are some important numbers. May I call that one, Mama? 911? Pamela asked. No, you may only press 911 if you need help. You may call Martin, though. So Pamela called Martin and they had a good talk. That night, with Meow Man at her feet, Pamela dreamt of telephone books and chalkboards and numbers and flashing buttons. The next morning, Pamela saw a cat in a tree. She ran in the house. Mama, there's a cat in the tree next door. May I call 911 now, Mama? No, said Pamela's mother. The cat will jump down all by itself. It doesn't need help. Pamela frowned. Then she saw her neighbor. Jessica, trying to push a broken bicycle. Mama, Mama, Pamela called. Jessica's bicycle is broken. May I call 911? May I do it now, Mama? No, you may only call 911 when a person needs help. Jessica's bicycle doesn't need 911. Pamela was disappointed. She was impatient to call 911. Martin came over and he and Pamela had sandwiches at the picnic table. Suddenly, Martin choked on a bite of his sandwich and he couldn't make any noise. Pamela ran to her mother. Mama, something's wrong with Martin. Pamela's mother rushed to Martin and patted his back, but he still could not breathe very well. She did the Heimlich squeeze, which helps people who are choking. But it wasn't working on Martin. What can I do, Mama? cried Pamela. Call, call 911, her mother instructed, and stay calm. Pamela hurried to the telephone. She pressed 911 very carefully. A woman's voice answered the phone. 911, do you have an emergency? I do, answered Pamela as bravely as she could. My friend is choking, and my mother is trying to help him, but he can't breathe. Do you know the address? Yes, 1405 Rainbow Drive. Help is on the way, but don't hang up the phone. Soon, a truck with flashing lights arrived, and the helpers got Martin to breathe again. They took Martin to the hospital to make sure he was okay. All right, so as you can see from this video, you should only call 911 in cases of emergency. So now let's test your knowledge. So, emergency or not, from our storybook, we learned that Pamela should only call 911 in an emergency. Which of the following situations is an emergency? Hmm, is it A, a cat sitting up in a tree? Hmm, I don't think a cat sitting up in a tree is an emergency. 
Let's move on to option C, a broken down bicycle. Mm, I don't think a broken down bicycle is an emergency either. So what is the answer? The answer is B, a friend choking on their food. So firefighters are our friends. We call 911 for help and firefighters come to the rescue. We learned from Pamela that firefighters came to help her friend because he was choking and couldn't breathe. Why else might a firefighter come to your home? Is it A, because you're sick, B, because you're hurt, or C, because of a fire? Well, it's a trick question because a firefighter comes for all of these, whether you're sick, hurt, or if there's a fire, a firefighter will come and help you. Now, if there's a fire, they, the firefighters may come and dressed a little bit differently. So firefighters wear thermal bunker gear to protect against heat, smoke, and flames in a fire. They wear boots to protect their feet, pants to protect their legs, a jacket to protect their chest and arms, a backpack full of clean air to help them breathe, a mask to protect their face and administer the clean air, and finally, a helmet to protect their head from fallen debris. So now let's watch this video to get a little bit more information about what firefighters wear. Hey everybody, Sparky the Fire Dog here. I'm here to talk to you about fire safety. It's kind of my thing. I'd like you to meet my friend, Antiliano. Hi. He says I can call him Tony. <laughs> Tony is a real firefighter. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I, I see you got a lot of equipment here. Uh, would you mind showing it to us and, and telling us about it? Absolutely. As a firefighter, I'm a community helper. We respond to medical emergencies and fires, and our role is to protect people. But we need special gear, and special equipment to protect us from the heat and flames in a fire. And what I have here is my hoodie. It goes over my head. It protects my neck and my ears. We're gonna put next is my turnout coat, or my coat, which protects me from the heat and flames inside a fire. Smells a little funny. Yeah, it does. It's uh, been into a couple fires. Oh. And what I use now is my ear pack. Air pack. Yes, this has the same air that you're breathing right now, kind of like a scuba tank. Oh. And we have a mask that protects us from the heat, flames, and smoke. Now, when I put this on, I am gonna look a little different. You won't recognize me, but I'm still the same firefighter. Wow. He's right, it totally covers his face. What's that sound? That's actually me breathing the air in my back. So I'm not breathing the toxic smoke in a real fire. You hear that? The sound is him breathing from the air in his tank so that he doesn't have to breathe smoke if there's smoke around. I'm gonna put my helmet. Protect my head from anything that may fall. And then, last but not least, my firefighting gloves. Wow. Mask, hood, helmet, and gloves. He's totally covered. Now I'm gonna do, I'm still the same person underneath all this equipment. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna take off my gloves. I'm gonna take off my helmet. I'm gonna take off my mask after I take off my hoodie. That's all it is, just air, same air you're breathing, uh, right in my ear pack. That is so awesome. Thanks for showing us all that, Tony. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Sparky. Of course, and thank you for watching. See you next time. <laughs>
So now moving on to the smoke alarm. A smoke alarm is used to detect a fire if it ever occurs in your home. So hear the beep where you sleep. Smoke alarms are like giant noises in the sky and start to sniff out smoke and fire. They will make a loud beep, beep, beep noise when they smell trouble. Smoke alarms should be present in every bedroom on every level of the home and in the common living room area. It is important to test all smoke alarms monthly to ensure that they are working. Remember, when you hear the beep, 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 get out and stay out. Also, never going back inside for toys or personal belongings. And how do you know when to get out and stay out? We'll create a fire escape plan. I encourage you and your family to get together after this video and create your own. It only takes a few minutes. Um, if you are a child, make sure you ask your parents if we have one in the house. And if you're a parent, make sure you grab your children and create one yourself. Um, I have created one here. Hi everyone, so my friend Sarah is having a little technical difficulties with her sound on her computer, so I just want to go ahead and review what she talked about. Her sound it ha is having a little technical difficulties, but just to go over what she talked about, she talked about the number one cause of home fires, which is cooking. So some tips to keep in mind to avoid those fires is to first stay in the kitchen when you fry, boil, grill, or broil food. Remember to wear short or close fitting, tightly rolled sleeves when cooking because sometimes that tends to get caught in the pan that you're working with or maybe when you're putting something in the oven, it could be really hot and that could catch the flames. So that is a hazard and that's something that should be avoided. So wearing short clothes um, and tight fitting clothes is something that you should definitely do while you're in the kitchen. The third tip is to have a three foot safety zone around all stoves and grills, just in case any oil pops in your face or anything like that. That also helps keep you safe. And the fourth tip is to never hold a child while you are cooking or carrying hot liquid. The fifth tip is to keep anything that can catch fire, like paper towels, oven mitts, wooden utensils, food packaging, towels, and curtains away from your stovetop. And the sixth tip is to turn pot handles away from the stove's edge. Always keep a lid nearby when you cook. If a small grease fire starts in a pan, slide the pan lid over the pan. Turn off the burner and do not move the pan. To keep the fire from restarting, leave the lid on until the pan has cooled. So the seventh tip is to, if you have a fire in your oven, turn it off and let the contents cool before cleaning. 
And if you have a fire in your oven and the flames escape from the oven, leave your home and call 911. Remember to get out and stay out. The ninth tip is to plug microwave ovens or other cooking appliances directly into a wall outlet. Never use an extension cord for a cooking appliance. Check electrical cords for cracks, breaks, or damage. The 10th tip is if you have a fire in your home or in your microwave oven, turn it off immediately. Never open the door until the fire is out. And the last tip is to clean cooking equipment after each use. Crumbs in a toaster or grease on the stovetop can always catch on fire, so it's a great it's a great thing to go ahead and clean that out to avoid any fires from occurring. So now Sarah is going to demonstrate how you can stop, drop, and roll in case there's a fire. So instead of showing the stop, drop, and roll activity, we are going to go ahead and play a video. And I encourage all of you who are watching, your friends and your family, to go ahead and try this activity. You'll never know when you'll need it. So if you would, if you are interested in receiving some additional fire safety information, um, you can definitely reach out to St. Petersburg Fire Rescue. Our contact information is listed here. So you can contact Lana Stevanovich at 727-893-7218, or you can contact Alexis Lawrence at 727-893-7121. Um, and what we can include is we have a pencil, a junior firefighter badge sticker, a coloring activity book um, that talks about when it is the right time to call 911. Um, there's also information for adults on home fire safety um, and smoke alarms and then also fire escape plans. Um, in addition, if you are if you live in the city of St. Petersburg, you may request a free smoke alarm um, if you are in need and our firefighters will come out and install them free of charge in your home. And the phone number to reach out to is our home safe hotline at 893 safe. Again, that's 893 safe. And that turns into 893-7233. Um, so we look forward to receiving information and sending you some fire safety tips to follow this great presentation by USF. Thank you very much. And you can reach out to CARD for our resources. Um, and we will make sure that there's a copy of the fire safety tips available for you. We have a couple upcoming events that are coming up um, tomorrow. Um, we're going to do transitioning to adulthood. We, you do need to register in advance. It is listed in the event section on our website. And on Monday, we will be doing an adulting series on relationships and friendships. Hope that you can join us for that as well. And we just like to thank you for joining us this evening. 
hope that you learned some new fire safety tips and we appreciate um, your joining us and we appreciate the students at USF Health Service Corps, as well as the St. Pete Fire Rescue for assisting us to present these um, safety tips to you this evening. Thank you and have a great evening.